It's pretty much 12 months since we first met Katie as she stalked and shot her first deer. Nothing strange there apart from her being vegan. Right, let's go. Since then, she has done her DSC-1 and is thinking about progressing to her DSC-2. That means a lot more time in the field and facing up to things like gralicking deer. Give me some jazz hands, Paul. <laughs> Hey, don't knock these, these from Sweden. These are from the petrol station in Sweden. They're four euros and they're like, what do you want to go out of this today in case? Because obviously you come down to stalk, you want some, a bit of venison possibly for, for Christmas. So the, the deer last year that we shot, yeah. um, I ate it for Christmas, my Christmas dinner, yeah. my New Year's Eve dinner, my birthday meal. And wow. I actually didn't take much more of of it home than that because I was yeah. on the train. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. could have been a bit awkward. Um, so yeah, but it would be quite cool to harvest the meat myself and then... You want to do it all? Yeah. So we're not calling you vegan, we're calling you um, an ethical, ethical eater, yes? Yeah. Okay. I mean, I've always been, but I say vegan because most people then can immediately go oh okay she doesn't eat meat blah, blah, blah. yeah it's a bit quicker than explaining well i'm a vegan but i well if someone came in it's... cold and you're about to shoot a deer and grallock it they would have a bit of a problem thinking that you're <laughs> really vegan <laughs> yes <laughs> uh ethical eater yeah we'll go for that paul will keep a close eye on how she gets on but we'll let katie make the decisions as she goes even with a significantly larger cull plan this year, there are plenty of animals on the ground. Katie's job is to find the right one. We use the cover crop for exactly that, cover. This is one of Paul's most successful crops. Talk on the outside, made through the middle. Um, it's done really well. On the top of it, a bit, bit sandy soil. But some of the clay ones, they've just been ah, it's just so dry. We didn't get no rain for such a long time. And, uh, yeah, so we've probably got 65% of good game crops. The rest of them are just very, very poor. Just one sunflower seeds. But the schemes now actually got next door, which are going to go into here, um, the winter wild bird mixes. I mean, they're doing whole fields of it. So we've got whole fields of sunflowers. So, wow. and there's like thousands of little birds and thousands of pheasants. They'll be nice and fat. <laughs> Katie is borrowing Paul's Sacco S20 with new yeah, stock. <laughs> This is the very rifle that Swedish Customs confiscated on our trip to Lapland. That's what it looks like then, is it? That's, that, that's what it's supposed to look like. This, what? What? I don't know what you're on about, David. Yeah, our Customs took it, took it from us. I don't know why. I obviously like the pattern of the, the coloured, new coloured yeah, stock. Yeah, 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 yeah. But you got it especially for us because it was something a bit different, a yeah. bit new that we could play with in Sweden. And the pattern, I think, looks pretty goddamn cool. What do you think? I'm it, not massively yeah, it's, camo, but I do like that. It's not a digital camo, it's like a cross, almost cross between the two. Basically the same stock with a bit different yeah, colour. Yeah. Katie commits to an approach on some deer. She's not confident off sticks, so we need to find some ground clear of cover to get on the bipod. There are deer in play and a youngster looks like an ideal animal, but there isn't a clear shot. To make this work, Paul helps Katie rest the rifle across the sticks in a sitting position. The anticipation builds as a young buck mooches through the foliage to within just a few metres. So when you should pull the trigger, as soon as you pull the trigger, you've got to do a few things. So what are they should be? Watch what happens. Yeah, watch what happens. So, so reaction to the animal. 23. Also, what sound was it? It's quite a, more of a plop noise. 
that means you're further back. So you're probably on the, I would say, I don't know 100%, I'd say you're, it's not gut shot, but it's probably on the, oh, he's dead, he's dead, don't worry. Just explaining what the facts are, and what's actually happened. She need not have worried. The shot was good, but the deer was so close, the impact of the 6.5 Creedmoor was punchy. Lungs, liver, smack in the heart, okay? And lungs are up through here. And that's a smack on the diaphragm, right on the sternum. That's a the sternum there. Okay, so your shot was there. Okay, bottom of the ribcage. Okay. From 23 metres off the knee, sat down. Good shot. The bullet's a bullet. Bullets react different every time. Katie wants to understand each step in the field to fork journey, and Paul helps her do a suspended gralic. David films them at work through the Hick Micro Griffin laser range finding thermal. Paul is working with Hick Micro, and although he doesn't use thermal units when stalking, it's good to have one as a fallback if a deer runs during an evening stalk. Plus, we're off foxing later. Back at the larder, and Katie is still preparing her deer. She even tells us that last time she felt guilty not eating the offal and wants to take the liver and heart back to have over Christmas. Is this how you imagined it would be, Katie? Don't ask me that right now. I have to. You're, you're mid, mid skinning. Yeah. It feels, um, I feel good to do it. Like, I think I should have done it, but. It's quite, um, feels quite clinical, like, because it is. But now it's food, you see, isn't it? It was yeah. kind of field before, but now it is food. Yeah, and it's like, it's kind of a bit of a, it's obvious, but it's a bit of a shock when it transitions, because it's like, yeah. I still very much remember what it looked like alive. Yeah. So... Which is important, I think, because we're so disconnected with meat in our society, like where it comes from. So I think it's actually a really good thing that I saw it alive and like I can appreciate it for what it was. And yeah. Yeah. Can I open? You can probably can tell Katie open. feels she has to do this animal out. justice so the, and connect with where out. her food comes from. This time, just as it was last time, it's not easy for her, but it's something she takes seriously. With Katie on her way home with her fresh venison, Paul can turn his attention to some problem foxes. He's mid-game season and one of his shoots is seeing a huge increase in foxes. On this bit of ground, we've got a natural area tonight basically, we've got just an influx of foxes coming from the city and it's like, it's endless, endless, endless. Normally we shoot 20, 30, 40 foxes here um, after the harvest. But this year, I think it's on 107 foxes. And that's just, and most of them are shot in these, we'll see it in a minute, there's one, two, there's four fields. And I think basically they run out of food and they're just coming through, straight through the golf course um, and straight onto here for the, obviously the pheasants and the, and the ducks, so the pheasants and ducks on here. He and Sam, his gamekeeper, have been using the Hick Micro Thunder 3 in one unit, which works as a spotter, front mounted add on, and dedicated scope. This is a fox Sam took just a few days ago using the Thunder as a scope. When you're out and about and you're shooting foxes, not for pleasure, for work, basically we see it, identify it, the next thing is to shoot it. So pressure is on. So, but here's, here's, feedback you've had from him. I say his feedback, he said, you know, it's, it's a great unit, good little unit. Um, I haven't let him out with this yet, um, but uh, I'm really pleased with this so far, the Griffin. So, uh, but now he's had some results, so results speak louder than words, to be honest with you. He's getting results, so, and no complaints. The Griffin, as the name suggests, is a hybrid. It actually offers night vision, thermal, and a combination of the two technologies. It's a bit of a shock to run through the pallets to see the image in detail. Handy for close inspection. Our foxing ends up being fruitless, so Paul decides to have a scan for poachers and check on the deer. These are the images from the Thunder, used as a spotter. These are the images from the Griffin. 
For more information about the Hick Micro range, go to hickmicrotech.com. And in the UK, it's eliteoptical.co.uk. Katie is a wildlife artist. You can find more of Katie's work at katiehargreavesart.com.